Right, now we're joined here by Sir Richard Lees after a, a, a great talk for the World Politics Society about Labour moving forward. Uh, for people who couldn't attend the talk, Sir Richard, I know it's been filmed, but what was the general premise of your talk? Uh, I think in terms of Labour rebuilding itself and becoming an electable party, uh, I think it needs to return to be a grassroots uh, organisation. It needs to spend a lot of time uh, getting in touch with and talking to and listening to the people uh, we are supposed to represent, that we want to uh, rep represent. Um, we have to have a values-led approach to how we are going to rebuild their trust and make sure that we get enough of them to vote for us to get a Labour government and ultimately for the Labour Party uh, if we can't win an election, if we can't be in power, we can't do anything for the people we want to represent. You spoke about how Labour dominated Manchester is. I know there's, there's only, there's, uh, was it 95 uh, Labour councillors, and then there's one in the opposition who is, uh, I think he used to be the MP anyway, didn't he, for uh, uh, Richard Lee? Is it Richard? Yeah, it's John Lee. John Lee, sorry. It's a Liberal Democrat who lost his seat. He, he lost his seat, seat, and he's now a councillor. So it's a, it's a Labour dominated place. You've spoken about Labour's successes in Manchester, about becoming the brand Manchester Labour as opposed to New Labour or Old Labour. Um, do you think that is the large part of the way forward, as you said then, about each individual place having its own brand of Labour and really? Uh, speaking to people on the doorstep at a local level? Uh, I, I think it's crucial. And, uh, we, we adopted the Manchester Labour uh, brand in around 2003 and it allows us to, when we do have those conversations with our electorate, say that we offer first and foremost uh, about them and about their interests and so our relationship for the example to the Labour Party nationally is not to represent the Labour Party nationally to them but the other way around to represent their views, their uh, hopes, their aspirations to the Labour Party and certainly for, uh, for a Labour government. It was about telling a Labour government what was important to Manchester people, not telling Manchester people what a remote government would do for them. Um, on the Manchester Mayor election, obviously it's coming up and Manchester's quite a strong uh, place for Labour. How confident are you that Andy Burnham is going to win? Uh, very confident that Andy is uh, going to win, but that's because uh, we're going to ensure we're going to do the uh, work. We're certainly not going to take it for uh, granted that that's the route mm. to uh, disaster. I think he's working harder now than any of the, the other uh, candidates, but he has a, a good track record as a minister, good track record as a local uh, MP, and, and clearly uh, a good track record for things like Hillsborough for his campaigning activity as well. Up north as well, we see the Copeland seat uh, is up for election. I think it was Jamie Reid, the Labour MP for there, and the Tories already started campaigning there, saying Jeremy Corbyn is a threat because uh, he opposes nuclear power uh, and things like that. And it's, a, it's very much a three-way marginal that the, that the UKIP or Conservatives could take. If Labour loses that up north, I mean, what, what happens next? That, that must be disastrous for the party. Well, uh, Copeland is a marginal seat, and... Uh, they have an elected mayor in uh, Copeland, which is uh, an independent mm. uh, at, at the moment. So I don't think we should assume that Copeland is a typical uh, uh, Labour seat. But um, the MP who stood down uh, was uh, uh, an employee of BNFL before he became a, a, an MP, uh, which is by a long way the most important economic entity within that uh, area. He was local. and. Uh, in terms of echoing what I was saying earlier, that for Labour to win in Copeland, I think we do need a, a, a Labour candidate. I do think we need a candidate that is able to stand up for those economic interests uh, in uh, West Cumbria to talk the same language uh, as, as people there and reflect the values of the people who live there. Final thing, what do you think of Jeremy Corbyn? Can he win an election, do you think? Uh, Jeremy's the leader of the uh, Labour Party and he's uh, democratically elected as a Labour Party member, uh, particularly I suppose as a leading uh, Labour Party member. My job is to do everything I can to make sure he can win uh, a, a general election. That's, that's the objective. Um, we'll find out in 2020, uh, or maybe earlier, if he can or not. <laughs> and just very lastly as well, because obviously you, you were a Warwick graduate here, uh, what was your best memory of, of being a student at Warwick studying maths? Uh, oh gosh, uh, my best memory of... Uh, was it the occupation of, maybe? Or something well, like those there, there, there are quite a few, few memories. The, um, the, the occupation of the Vice-Chancellor's uh, office was uh, uh, my first year, actually quite early in my first year as well. It was all very exciting, uh, very interesting. 
uh, the, the only course that I can remember doing that I got uh, remotely enthusiastic about was a functional analysis course in my, <laughs> in, in my second year. But that's just, it was a reading course. We didn't have lectures, right. and that was a, uh, a lot, lot better. I thought and just go away and solve problems, which was. Uh, 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 really, really good. But uh, I think in many respects, although I got a decent degree, I don't think I was exactly a model student. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sir Richard, for joining us.